Hey, Broadway fans, we're back for another week of Broadway Breakdown here on Popcorn Talk. Stay tuned. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. Oh, my God. All right. I had a friend who kept calling it Calgary, and everybody... Calgary. Does everybody do it's that It's not now? the never-ending road to Canada. Stop. Calgary. You don't know that. Cool. It could be. Cool. It's the new version. It's the new version. It's oh, new I want a Canadian. So they sing in the Canadian version. Canadian. I want a Canadian Les Miserables. I think that would be great. They there is one. There is one. Yeah. <laughs> they did, they did, they did go, a whole guys. thing. You got to go to Canada to get it. I wanna, but, well, I mean, I would go just to go, but I would also I'm go I'm all about that. <laughs> oh, my God. No. So we're I get talk- enough puns at home. <laughs> anyway, hi guys. Welcome to our show. Sorry. Uh, we are here with Broadway Breakdown on Popcorn Talk. Today we're talking Les Mis movie version. I am your host, Brianna Phipps. You can find me everywhere, bphipps14. Except Snapchat, as I say every week, bphipps1214. I know I say this every week and I never really snap, but you know, follow me. Why not? <laughs> follow you on the occasion that you do snap. The occasion yeah, that I do, and it's hilarious. Usually, it's usually a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm 123Jackieb on platforms, but JackieB123 on Snapchat. And then um, we have a Twitter for Broadway Breakdown. It's at Broadway yes. Down. so please follow us there as well. And, and we're on Facebook, too. We're on Facebook. is joining us today. She's not in the booth. She's hey. here. Yay. They let me out for just this one show. Uh, just <laughs> for kidding. one more day. Just one more. Yes, <laughs> for one more day, and then I'm back in there. Uh, you can find me where all the shenanigans will ensue at ATORS890. And guys, make sure you like, subscribe. We are on iTunes. We're on SoundCloud. Uh, we're on Google Play now. Ooh, um, and, fancy. you know, hit that little thumbs up right below the screen right now and give us some love. And we had a really nice, uh, I said I was going to read the comments last time, we actually had a really like wonderful complimentary comment. Aww, did it? Um, it? It was said something to the effect of like, we do for theater what After Buzz does for television, Aww. which was really nice. And now I will shout out your name on the next episode because I didn't read or I didn't write down the name before I came in here today. Well, you're awesome. Well, I might look you. it up while we're, while we we're having some It was downtime. a really yeah, wonderful Alexis, Alexis will be in the chat world, too, if anyone that wants to chat along with us while we discuss. Chat with me! Um, before, as always, before we start our show, we're going to start with This Week in Theater that's always brought to us by Robert Diamond and BroadwayWorld.com, and Jackie's going to take that. Well, away. Robert Diamond gave us some updates on the cast for both the Chicago touring cast for Hamilton and for um, the replacements in the Broadway cast. It's it's a long list. It's very involved. I, I'm just going to refer you to his article on that one. Um and then he mentions the there are two new cast members in Hairspray Live, Rosie O'Donnell and yeah. Sean Hayes. Which Rosie O'Donnell's playing a character I don't think I've heard of. Yeah, uh, in the I have the article she is the, She's the gym teacher. Gym teacher, yes. Did we have a gym teacher? No. Okay. I don't yeah. remember. I wanted to make sure. I don't remember in the original musical though ever being a gym oh, teacher. Oh man. So she But knows. I'm happy that Sean Hayes is gonna be um Mr. Pinky. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy, happy that they're both in it. Yeah, I both I like I like them both. I'm so. happy Kristen Chenoweth and Sean Hayes are reunited. I, am I wrote it on my Twitter, I was so excited. So so it's gonna be fabulous. That. We're so excited about Hairspray Live. It's um, it's looking I'm to from, be a really good cast. Since I'm from Maryland, not from Baltimore, but since I'm from Maryland, I really do enjoy Hairspray. Um, also, he lists a lot of the reviews for Cats, which uh, is featuring Leona Lewis, and they're. The reviews are not nice. <laughs> so all I'm gonna they're say, basically, it's so weird to see such a okay. Leona Lewis is a beautiful young lady, and, and I she love sings her so, so much. nicely. It's just weird but for that is, character, yeah. especially if you watch the old like what was it? It was BBC, right? Um, the, 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 the the DVD, the VHS one? yeah. Oh, I have it on both. Yeah. I have it on DVD and VHS, and it's like she's supposed to look like this old, decrepit cat, and yeah. she's just and like, she's just look like, at me as she's glam, asking. Well, rock she, fabulous. the whole point of Cats is that they're trying, they're the, asking to be reincarnated. No, like her, <laughs> her makeup was so on point. I was like, I don't even know which cat this is because she looks so good. <laughs> I was like, but she she sang so beautifully though. But I, I do like her singing. But most of the reviews are basically saying that she's not that great of an actress. So the reviews um, are saying listen but, to the but soundtrack Katz is and not have even, to watch it. Is that what they're saying? They they actually don't like her singing either, which I wow. don't necessarily agree with. Get out of town. Um, she's and it's it's a lot of like comparing her to the original cast, you but. But, you know, I, I think you should check out um, Robert's article so you can get an idea of all the reviews for it. I'm not that big of a fan of cats in general, so a lot of what the reviews say, I'm just like, that's just my feeling about cats. Yeah, <laughs> true. I was a fan as a true. kid of, like, certain songs, and then I grew up and I was like, this is a musical. 
This yeah. is a story. Yeah. I, that It works as bits. It works, yeah, yeah. it works as songs. They're very beautiful songs, but when you try to put... And this is also what happens with some... Um, some musicals, it's like you try to put certain songs together mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm not sure that quite works. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, every time I see it since my mom got to play uh, the, I guess, the understudy of the white the white cat Victoria I guess was the name of the white cat back in I don't even know the 90s I guess or the 80s um she cats has a special place in my heart but I've watched it now since I'm uh, since since I was a little kid and I was just like okay this play is a little strange but I can admire the fact that it's literally just cats dancing the entire time like those are those are people who are yeah. dancing the entire time the co- and singing go, That's the costume a lot is of amazing the makeup is amazing but yeah like, the actual writing of the play I'm the just story like story just isn't Andrew Lloyd Webber you took it from a like a like a 10 line paragraph and made it into a 2 hour cat fest <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? I don't understand. But it's, yeah, I, I understand that it, it's probably a little weird, but I, I feel bad that they're just trashing on the play a little bit. I mean, well, have, it, you know, critics trash on, trash on a lot of things, and then True. people go see them and love it. So I, I don't always yeah. listen to the critics anyway. Yeah, that, yeah, that does happen a lot. Are they going to make it into a DVD? Because I'll, I'll, I'm all for that. You will take my money. <laughs> just so I can have another one next to my or, original Cats tapes. <laughs> they're also doing a revival of Miss Saigon, which... Um, That's my dad's favorite musical of all time. It's it's really like, exciting seen it to me. So many Can I times. say that the only thing, like not the only thing, but the main thing that pops in my head when I hear Miss Saigon is that SNL skit when Broadway was like going oh, back, and oh. Keenan Thompson was the creator, and he was like, "Is it time to revive Miss Saigon?" Yeah. <laughs> like that's all I can think of when I read that was like, "Oh, Keenan Thompson must be so happy." He's, He's so happy excited. Right now. And for for the rest of the details, of course, check out. Um, Robert Diamond's article, and then um, the last article was the the, um, the new Sondheim musical with David Ives to premiere in 2017. We don't have a lot of information about it yet, yeah. but um, again, I'm going to refer you to Robert's article so you can read the companion piece. I mean, yeah, if it's Stephen Sondheim, I'm going to listen to it slash go see it because I love Stephen Sondheim. Oh yeah, no, he's fantastic. Like, oh, what if it's like Dogs the Musical? Hey, I'm more of a dog person than a cat person, so why not? There you go. She's already signed up. (laughs) I'm signed up. (laughs) I'm here for Bunnies the Musical. When you make that happen, I'll be there. Oh, wow. All right, thank you. I'll take Red Pandas and or Foxes. I love Red Pandas. Right? Sorry, I didn't mean to. We can continue. I just... All the cute little fuzzy animals make place. Let's just have a whole animal musical. (laughs) Zootopia. Here we go. Zootopia. Zootopia. (laughs) Well, that's kind of the Lion King, isn't it? No, it's... it's, Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) All Which right. is a great musical. But anyway, um, I do want to do a correction because um, last week we said that Les Mis is about the French Revolution. It's not. Yeah, um, we did. We saw the catch. And I think part of it... The especially... French Revolution occurred about 30 years earlier, and this is kind of like... Uh, it's it's a local uh, Paris revolution yes. that well, happened as a result of the French Revolution. What I was saying French was revolution. I think that the reason um, people get confused is because when the place starts, it's like shortly after... Um, a French Revolution. It says in the beginning of the movie, at least that's what it says. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, um, and I think that confuses people a little bit. Yeah, it, it ends. It ends like it begins on the end of Napoleon Bonaparte's mm-hmm. rule, well, mm-hmm. which is like essentially the French Revolution. Yeah. So, so it's like ca- a, like the events are a catalyst. The events of the French Revolution. <laughs> no, the events of the French Revolution are a catalyst for this. But at the yeah. same time, the actual revolution that you're seeing um, is is it's on the a smaller scale. June Rebellion in Paris. Yeah. yeah, I think that's just why the people constantly get that wrong. But I think it, that they always well, it's it's it was like uh, it's it's like an anti monarchy movement, yeah. which was coming out of the French Revolution, and then they had another one after that and so and at the time period there were a lot of like anti-monarchy movements mm-hmm. that leave us leave us, lead us up until today in our um in the western culture of not having monarchies yeah yeah um so i kind of want to start this off by like just going through the cast that we have for the film yeah for and sure. just giving like our opinions on them and how we thought they did let's start with Hugh jackman see i've I liked him in this, but I'm also biased because I also love him like Boy From Oz and like yeah. things like I that. Mean, he's but huge, he's huge. He's huge. He's huge. But I know some people who are like advocates for not having Hugh Jackman in theater. Period. And I'm like, what? Well, they can... The thing to me is like Hugh, and this is saying coming from a place of me loving Hugh Jackman as an actor. His yes. voice is not that great to me. I don't really like his voice, but 
I don't think they could have cast anyone else as Jean Valjean because he embodied that role so well to me. Mm-hmm. And you have people like Colm, who are already way too old oh, to play that part. Oh, I love him so, so much. I had also, no problem with him. Also, Hugh Jackman him. like killed himself for this part. No, he did. He lost a ton of weight for just the opening scenes, then gained it back. Mm-hmm. He went on a thirty-six our water deprivation so he could make his skin look he like deprived himself of Which drinking water for so 36 dangerous. hours to make his skin look like flimsy and stuff like he yeah. when he was in the very beginning scene like he hauled around like all this stuff like because they didn't have the budget they really wanted to shoot the opening in um uh, i think nice nice france i believe. think so yeah. and they didn't have the budget and they finally got money but they couldn't have as much crew so he helped set up and carry stuff like he loved this role and so I have to respect him for the fact of how much effort he put into it yeah. and I loved him in the role um, he's entertaining to watch that's the thing is like his his facial expressions and the way he embodies the role are so moving that the fact that his voice doesn't sound like Alfie Bowes or like Colm Wilkins oh, Alfie me, Bo, don't even get me um, started it doesn't really bother me I, didn't, I wasn't bothered by his voice in any song except Bring Him Home that was the one song I was not okay with his voice because he couldn't hit the high notes. Okay, that so that wasn't just me where it kind of wasn't hitting my ear correctly because yeah. he was, it looks like he was trying, but he couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think, I don't know if it's his voice or what, but I, okay. for whatever reason, he wasn't hitting those high notes that you're supposed the to. The one that bothered me was, I don't actually remember the name of the song, but the song where um, he's, he's kind of having this, like... Um, uh, mental dilemma about whether or not to reveal himself as Jean Valjean and then he eventually does most oh, of that yeah. is talked through and that's my only problem with that song it's like I I was like okay either you're gonna talk this or you're gonna sing this because it's like this in between is like a little bit bothersome I mean I know me. Brianna and I have talked about it like outside of the studio that we've talked about how it I think you were there also that we've talked about that there were a lot of points in the movie that felt like they're, they could have sung through that, but they didn't, and they chose to talk it through. And I was like, uh, no, that's why it's powerful. You have to sing it. <laughs> right. Sing it, sing it to me. And then, so, and then yeah. the, other, the other thing that I was kind of waiting for is the musical version I saw, he rips open his shirt, and it says 24601, mm-hmm. and I'm like, uh... We oh, have I the Wolverine here, and he's not like ripping open his shirt and I showing. I didn't see that when I saw it. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's it depends because I saw it when I went to go see it with my mom. One actor did that, and then when I went to go see it with my dad, nothing. Oh, see, yeah. I had. No I think clue he had like an actual like his uh his jacket. It was on had his it jacket. On his jacket. Yeah. I didn't know that that was Grab not true. Really? Because <laughs> the version I, I saw, yeah, the guy just rips like, off God. his shirt, and it's like they take a light and shine it on, so mm-hmm. it's not actually written on there, but it's like a lighting effect where. You see two four six zero one written on his chest. Well, now yeah, that like, I like, know that, that like I wish that they had ripped Hugh Jackman's shirt off. But. <laughs> so that was my heavy because I was like, this this musical so sad. You could give us a little Wolverine shirt shirtless action here. <laughs> oh, but I thought overall, I thought he did well, especially as an actor. Even if yeah. a lot of people don't really like his voice, I think his acting ability, especially okay, anytime he looked on. into the camera. Just my heart I mean, just exploded. I know we're gonna discuss the ending later, but that ending always makes me cry oh. and. 95% of the reason is because like Hugh Jackman is just, just so moving. <laughs> it's so moving in that ending. That was great. So let's move on to probably which will be the most controversial. Oh. oh Russell Crowe. Oh. Not Norm Lewis. Here we go. Not Norm Lewis. <laughs> I have to agree with Jackie on this one. I love Norm Lewis to an unhealthy obsession kind of thing, but I will give, I will be the middle person here because I know that you liked I, Russell Crowe. It's not that I liked him. Okay. I'm just as a devil's advocate type of deal. Sure, sure, sure. In Hollywood, um, producers put so much money into the film, and while we all want to see the theater people, they're like, what's going to make us capitalize? What's going to get us the most money back for our film? Yeah. And they're going to be like, but Russell Crowe. People don't know, like, the theater people know normally this, but maybe people outside the theater world don't know them. They're not going to go see a film for that name. Yeah. Like, that's just how their mind will work. They want an A-list star. If I, I think put back. I think if and, they did, I'll let you sorry, finish. Go for it. Sorry, go, 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 go. Yes, let me finish. Sorry. No, no, go. Uh, and I would have a worse problem with it if he didn't act it very well, which I thought he did a great job acting it. And um, at least he can hold a note, although it wasn't powerful enough voice. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. She can disagree with me all she wants. I lost. 
when I watched, I you know, I watched it this weekend, and I was fast-forwarding through all of his parts, because I was God. like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I either have to mute it or fast-forward I have it. to give him credit, though, for especially for coming back out for the Oscar performance and seeing right. after everybody was bashing on him. No, I, I didn't did. think he did a terrible job. Did I think there could have been better choices? Yes. Did I wish that they had picked someone that had a more powerful voice? Yes. yes. But... Oh, no, no. I mean, yeah, I completely understand with you, and that's what I'm saying. I liked what he did. His voice just wasn't what I wanted to, like, it It just wasn't It wasn't enough. powerful. Yeah, exactly. He Especially, couldn't hit those end notes to the power that they need to be hit. Yeah, like, Stars was hard for me it a was little bit. One. I was like, whew. To me, it didn't even, like, sound like it was anywhere near what the notes like, should have before been. Before we even get into, like, most of the, of the, of the movie is that... The confrontation is huge. Everybody knows that. So the fact that I would rather listen to Neil Patrick Harris and, and was it Jason Siegel? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. a confrontation more than I would like to see. I mean, Hugh Jackman was really good in that scene. That All whole the, sword fight was well, really good. Well, and that was Russell Crowe's idea to do the sword no, fight. No, Because great. they were going to do it just singing through. And Russell yeah. Crowe was like, this is film. It's not like, it, well, on stage you can watch two people singing at each other. It's going to look weird. Yeah. on film of two people standing in a room seeing each other when one is yeah, just Yeah, at empty chairs and empty tables, they have someone sitting and we see their pores for like however long. Dear God, I'm not was... there yet. Whoa. Gosh. Whoa. But it's like, I mean, That's when like you're talking... That's like my favorite part of the entire movie, so now I'm just getting mad. Oh, okay, well, Because well, well, well. when you're talking, though, about something like a medium of film where you have the ability to do things you can't do on stage, like a sword fight... Yeah, of course. You would want to insert that in. Or, yeah. like, reflecting on the, you know, we'll get to the empty chairs. I thought it was a good too. addition. I agree with you on that one. But, yeah, it's just, it was, it, mm, Russell Crowe was so weird. Yes, they could have chosen someone different, but they also could have chosen someone worse. True. So, no? it's not Pierce Brosnan. No, no, I will give you that. I will give you that. Mamma Mia was Sorry, rough. that's the one I could not even anything Mama with. Mamma Mia was Whenever rough we get with to him Mama in there. Mia. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the next person that we're going to be talking about really blew me away. I, just me, though. Just me. That I know was like a lot the of people. I was like, guys, she blew me away. Um, but I, I don't know if you wanted to introduce her or not. Oh, it's fine. Uh, Anne, we got Anne Hathaway, of course. Um, she deserved She deserved that Oscar. She deserved yeah, every she inch of that Oscar. Same with Hugh Jackman. Like, put her entire soul in life. Like, lost weight. Like, went through all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Her hair she is her really hair. being cut on in that scene. On that scene. Yeah, that scene. and that she, is for real. Yeah, that was that was rough. Because I was like, you could, you could hurt somebody cutting someone's and hair like that. And, you know, there's people that get on her about, oh, she didn't sing pretty during she's not supposed to sing pretty well and on stage you want to hear that you go to hear the prettiness and like the emotion comes through through nope. that nope. but when you're on film and you're so close and you can get those emotions like i i need to see you in pain no i, I like her actually mess. i i the whole direction though i mean she was she was fitting the direction of the scene as well because that whole um like prostitute scene is much darker in the movie mm-hmm. than it is in the play well, they, it's kind of like i mean yeah there are some like heavy dark things going on but it's a little bit more fun whereas here you're just like no seriously these people are nasty and this is terrible and then she she's literally like this guy is having sex with her as she's like Sobbing. saying you're making love to someone who's already dead. Yeah. And you're like, holy crap. Well, that is and that's like... why they chose to move the song um, is because they didn't feel like in the movie, you just, you've just you just met her when she sings that song. And yeah. it would have a whole different meaning having her sing it right after the factory as opposed to having her singing it after she's gone through all of this stuff and yeah. put herself into the lowest part of her life. Yeah. It made sense to me. I, I was mean, okay with that move. Yeah, yeah and I, I don't think I don't know anybody who was actually bothered with the fact that that was that they moved that. But I think my my actual favorite scene is actually is as much as it was really painful to watch was when she looks straight into the camera as she's crawling out of bed and right. saying her line. And she was and that was her choice, which was great because uh, it I actually had to stop and go, oh, that was too real for me. I I, I need a minute. And I love the fact that she like did this because she wanted to play this role so badly because her mother had played it on stage mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, like and honored she, her mom in a way. And she said that she even cried a lot in rehearsals because she wanted to do her mom justice. Also because Fontaine is a very sad character, and so anytime I hear someone like we want to hear something pretty, I'm like, no, I want to see snot. Like that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and she so. does have a very beautiful voice, and she yeah. sings like when you when you get to the end scene or when you get to other. Um, uh, Fontaine ghost scenes. The Fontaine ghost scenes. <laughs> um, she's singing very beautifully, and she's singing very beautifully in that factory scene. So yeah. when you're watching it, you're not like, this is a person who is struggling with 
the music, you're watching a person who's just like struggling and that acting informs certain other choices. Yeah. It's I'm less bothered by it when it's an acting choice to not sound pretty than when, it's just your voice. than when you just <laughs> Russell Crowe yourself and suck at singing. Dear God. <laughs> What's true though? Um, <laughs> so Samantha Barks was probably for me the biggest surprise that they put her in the film. I was Because really... for the longest time I kept hearing uh, Leah Michelle. Yeah. I thought for sure they were going to go with that. I was surprised I'm actually they did the glad. Last... No, I'm really no, I'm happy. <laughs> I love Samantha Banks, especially since her 25th anniversary, the 25th anniversary when she did that. I was like, oh. The only problem so I beautiful. have with her in this entire film is how tiny her we are. Just her gross corset was so, so tiny. ridiculous. Because in, in, in the actual play, when she plays um, Eponine, she wears a giant coat. Yeah. She's got a hat. Like She looks like she's a healthy yeah, human this, being. This, this looked like... Let's make her boobs look real and big. And it was just yeah, so, it that was just what so bothered me. different from head to waist. Yeah. yeah. It, it was, was crazy. I was like, I don't know if that was just a costume choice, but dear God, that poor girl. I don't know how the, she was able yeah, to the, sing. Yeah, the scene where, um, the scene where she's singing on my own and she's like, and ends up like sitting and crying um, in the rain. I don't know how she was able to do there's that. There's a close up on her, and the close up hits at such a level where you're seeing like boobs just and clean. face. And I was like, this is not this character, <laughs> you know? And it's distracting because she's so talented and she's acting her heart out and she's singing so well, and like. You're, You're like, I'm being distracted the by the fact that her cleavage is, like, in my face. It's so, it's so, it's just real good, though. Yeah, I'm not going to. the male seat's okay. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know I what could... men are going to be like, yeah, sad Eponine. Yeah. I mean, you I don't think they're even surprised. looking at her sad face. This is and not, like, this is not, cleave. This, this is not that kind so of So I thought musical. that that was one of the most pleasant surprises of the film was that I they liked... did take her. And I want, it kind of makes me wonder, I was like, did they have to fight to have her be in it because she wasn't a name, really? Like, she was in the 25th anniversary. She auditioned, like, something like seven times. Yeah. yeah. Something, something crazy. But I was just, like it always goes through my mind with the producers. Maybe it was a Like, lot... did they have to fight because Leah Michelle would have been a name. She was on Glee. No, right. but I think maybe, and also she's been on Broadway, like, forever. But I think also maybe Leah Michelle like, dropped out last minute and they're like, oh, my God, we're panicking. Well, this girl auditioned seven times and she's done it on Broadway. We'll just throw her in there. But, you know, they had Aaron Tivet, who yeah. Yeah. like more at that point in time like now he's on like the CW and other like things that people know oh, but like so at the time he was predominantly just a Broadway actor yeah True. and that because that was right before Graceland started yep um so I mean I I feel like they were probably of the mindset of okay let's cast like some main like a, mm -hmm. some of the main beefier roles as like Hollywood stars and then oh, we can pepper ones. it with Broadway yeah, yeah, yeah. here yeah. and there um ugh Amanda Seyfried. Oh. She is Seyfried. How you feel about Valjean? I'm not Valjean Chavert. Me That's too. how I feel about Amanda yeah. Seyfried. I actually just... really like her, though, because... We're just opposite all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> I like her in that role, though, because Cosette, to me, is that kind of, like, la, 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 la. Okay, was, you that know, makes sense. Like, the, was... the vibrato was too overwhelming for me. Like, no, I couldn't I thought, even pay attention to the words. Was like... All I heard was, ah. I literally thought, no offense, Jackie, that someone was just doing this every time she was singing. But they're, they're like, doing that her. to Eddie Murad Maine, too. True. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, no, his vibrato was really bad. That's, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think for her, too, it's like, usually I can try to justify meaty, like less singing from me um, yeah. if I get the acting part. And because that's such a tiny role, especially in the film, like you bar she's barely you there. You barely see her, yeah. It, it's just, I can't. I can't comprehend why we couldn't get a more soprano. It was rough. singer because I've heard her sing lower and it's fine, but, but, she, but I just don't think she's a as high of a soprano for that. I but think yeah, the but, other reason it didn't bother me though is because Cosette's role is like is so not my favorite. I just don't I just don't like that role in general. Like, and I understand why it has to be there. You have to have the young lovers. Like, there's a formula. It's been set up. Like, you have, because that's an, an important character to have in, in uh, Jean Valjean's redemption. So I understand why the character is there, but, like, her songs are not interesting to me. Yeah, and, no, yeah. She's, you know. she's arguably the least yeah. important character. I mean, I always liked listening to at least the stage, <clears throat> the stage play for A Heart Full of Love, because you can, you can hear it. But in the but movie, my, in Heart Full of Love, Eponine's the part I want to hear, yeah, not her. Yeah, yeah, that's the part where I'm like, mm -hmm, yay. Um, but I just, I don't know. I like I like her as an actress. It just, I don't know what it was. It yeah, because I liked her in other things. I liked yeah. her in Mamma Mia. Yeah, I thought she was I great. liked her in Mean Girls. I, I did mean like girls. her in Mean Girls. <laughs> That was great. I even liked her in that Justin Timberlake Time movie that I didn't like. Oh, I actually liked that movie. We're not going to get into that, though. But, yeah. 
I just, I don't know, but uh, uh, she was just, it was yeah, just I weird. Yeah, there was just something that just rubbed me the wrong way there. I can't, that's the songs I usually just go, skip. <laughs> Fast forward. Uh, so yeah, so going to Eddie Redmayne, the vibrato singing wise didn't bother me. It was okay. the, I have a, I have a, of the head. <laughs> That was really rough. We're trying not to be negative, but the, come on, no, guys. No, I mean, I'm not going to be negative, because I did like Eddie Raymond. I didn't I didn't mind his voice. Like, he has that deeper kind of froggy liked, voice, which uh, a lot of people have. I liked when he was singing about Cosette when he gets to uh, the... Oh, I always forget what, what the, the actual, like, place that they're having drinks and doing their planning. I oh, it's supposed to be, like, they call oh, it cafe the Cafe Red and Black. Yeah. yeah, there you go, Cafe Red and Black. I always forget that, but it, I like to... His... I don't know if that's the cafe's actual name, but, but that's yeah, the name but of the they, song, they, just so... call it, they just call it the cafe. Yeah, yeah so... and then the song is the Cafe Red and Black song, so... I'm yeah, like, no, exactly. Mm-hmm. So when they're at the cafe and he's talking, like, you can tell that he's like, I'm in love with this random woman I just met, and it's great, but... As the as the movie progresses, I'm like, what's happening? I just always, whenever I see, because I've seen actors on Broadway do it too. Like I've seen Tony Award actors like during shake their performance their whole... to shake their whole head, and I'm like, is your jaw just so tight that your entire head is shaking? Like, doesn't it? Hurt? Nick Jonas didn't do that. Just saying, guys. <laughs> just saying, Nick Jonas didn't. do I that. I would rather have Eddie Redmayne, Eddie Redmayne, Eddie Redmayne um, than Nick the Jonas. Nick and Jonas the, yeah. To go back to what we were saying about and Nick empty Jonas chairs. does a fine job at in the the twenty fifth in the TV series Kingdom. I must. say. Oh yeah. Right? Oh yeah. He looks um, great. To go back to empty chairs because the reason why it's one of my favorite parts of the entire film is because of all of the emotion and because I'm so close to him, I get all of that emotion. That's yeah. why I like it because it. I like it better than I do in the play because in the play I don't feel like as emotional as I did watching the film. Well see that's where I'm going to play devil's advocate because I actually see, yeah, liked I have the Nick Jonas. absolute jo- opposite view. Yeah I actually liked Nick Jonas's uh, version in the play just because there was close ups during that because you're not actually in the play he just he stood there with one light on him in his black robes and that was it. And, and then they brought everybody else in the background, and then they disappeared. And I was like, "That's." No, I don't like Nick Jonas either. I like the tenth anniversary guy. But, no, yeah, um, he was great too. I like him also. I um and and the guy who played Angelra in the twenty mm. fifth anniversary apparently also plays Marius, which I think I would really like his. I love his voice, so I think I would like him as well. But anyway, um, the the reason empty chairs and empty tables bothered me is like the flip side of what you feel because I like. The, the staging to me is what's the most moving about that mm-hmm. because he, Marius is like basically lucky to be there. And so when you have all these people coming in and the the staging is usually like it, it, people come in and stand around him or behind him, the people who have died in, in, in this um, revolution. So, I mean, they could have made that choice and I think that would have been a good as well. But I just, I just really I just, connected with his emotions. See, yeah. I just wish that would have been there because, like, to me, Marius singing by himself kind of, like, negates the fact that it's like, well, you're not, like, we're not getting this visual, the powerful visual of all the people who have died and he's the only one left. But I think it comes through because of his emotion. Because, because he's he, so alone. It also bothered because me. Because he's so alone. Because That close-up, like, is so nauseating, not because I think Eddie Redmayne is unattractive or anything like that. It's, it's just, just really like, close. It's so close, and it starts off with, like, a profile. And I'm like, I don't understand why this close-up is, like, a profile mostly in focus on his cheek. It, it's, like, a very odd choice. And then finally they do turn around and get to his face, and then the room is out of focus. And I was like... This song is about you in the cafe, and we've seen only, like, one wide shot of the actual cafe that was very brief. So I can't see any empty chairs or empty tables. So it was, like, so frustrating to me. I'm just going to have to agree and disagree with you on that Yeah, I'm I'm also going to be on the same I just really love that. I just hate the use of of extreme close-ups to be, like, Look, we have film, and I can show this emotion because I have a I have a camera, you know. Yeah, and that might, we're gonna get to that later. And that may, might be part of it is I don't mind the close-ups whatsoever. Yeah, they make um, me, and that I mean that was that's a thing that bothers me in a lot of films, like most notably um, Hunger Games, when they have like this shaky steady cam close-up. I'm like, people don't look at people like that. I'm so disoriented because when I'm talking to like you or Alexis, mm-hmm. I'm not like this close to your <laughs> face. <laughs> It's very disorienting, and especially, ready for my close-up, Mr. DeVille. and especially when they whip the camera around, because that's also like a non-human thing yeah. to do. It's like, also when I'm talking to you, I'm not like two inches from your face with my head moving around it. And I'm like, oh, this is um, just... Yeah, no, and the, one thing, the, the, one, the one last thing I will say from Eddie Women, because I thought it was just really cool, was he did that take 21 times. 
Seriously? That, that last one that we watched in the film, that's the 21st take because he wanted to keep redoing it because he what? said that he built up some emotion getting to the end of the song that at the end of the song he wanted to redo it and have the emotion he had at the end be the emotion he had at the beginning. So that's why he looks so like worn down and okay, crying because he's been crying probably for like an hour. And maybe that's why he falls and he does like a little stumble yeah, into probably. the chair in the beginning. And I was always like, I was like, that looks so natural that I wonder if it's a stumble that they just kept because it looks. So I just natural. can't imagine being in that mindset and that emotion for that long. <laughs> like that would be really hard to that's, do. That's that's dedication right there for sure. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, this is Brianna's like top top favorite. I love oh him my God. so yeah. much. Yeah, I thought he did great. It's really his rough. voice is amazing. I wanted he him to perfect. play. I didn't want him to play Marius. Like, yeah, I was surprised I, when I heard the cast. I was like, why isn't he playing Marius? What? But I mean, but I'm but also glad did, that he didn't though. Yeah, he did a really good job with Angelus. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm used to. Oh, I always forget the actor's name who played the new Phantom for Love Never Dies. Uh, played this role in the 25th anniversary. His voice is so booming that. Oh, the it, guy who played Angel around the 25th anniversary? Mm-hmm. So, I actually love him. No, 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 I do. That's what I'm saying. I loved him so much because his voice is so powerful. So it was, I love Aaron also because he's very soft and, like, he pushes but, to but the point. But he had that, like, really, like, intensity with the face. He the had, entire time. <laughs> yeah, like, Almost the entire like, come movie. on, guy. Take yeah. a break. It's, yeah, it's, you it's can right. relax his those brows. His voice is, like, perfection to me. It's I just, so good. It's so love nauseating, voice. the fact, because I've read so much about him, that he never was about to do musical theater or anything in high school he did it for extracurricular so he could get into college wow and then it just like he just naturally has that that's, that's just not, not even fair. that's just not right that's <laughs> not right but he he was one of my favorites out of the entire film it's so good yeah i mean he and i love the tribute they do to the play with him with the death because they wanted to go back into the cafe mm-hmm. but they wanted to still tribute the way that he dies in the play and i thought that was really cool oh man just every time i see that scene when they line everybody up at, at the like at their bodies, I was mm-hmm. just like I can't. I like was not ready to see that scene. That was nuts. It was again. Too it's real. really good though because it's one of those things that uniquely yes you can have bodies on the stage, but it's very unique to film to be able to have these very realistically looking dead bodies. Exactly, well, and they're and, all children too. Like yeah. they're young people. And getting onto the next person, Daniel Heddlestone. Whoa. He Whoa. when he died, that wasn't like a dummy lying there. That was him. That was lo- him. holding his eyes open. That still. Yeah. He was great. That he was been, really phenomenal. That he really been was. In some stuff, right? Well, he was in Les Mis on Broadway. He played this no, role. No, yeah, not I on knew, Broadway on the West End. Yeah, I didn't uh, know he that. He played all, in Oliver. He was with Samantha Barks in Oliver. He That's was the right. Artful okay, Dodger. okay, okay. Um, and then since then, he's been in Into the Woods. Yeah, he was the one that played the little the, the uh, little he, kid, Jack. right? Yeah, Jack. Yeah. Um, I, I love this actor and he's I love so the good. he's adorable the Cockney act that was amazing. <laughs> See, oh. this is why last last week I was like, this is really even though it started out as like a French musical, I was like, it's really a British like West <laughs> yeah, End musical yeah. because like everybody here has like Cockney accents. I know, but I just love Cockney accents. So as soon as he started talking, I was like, especially when he's on the back of the carriage and talking to yeah, the camera, I was that like, that was a great shot. Yeah, it was great. He he's so good. I can't wait to see what he is when he's actually like an adult. Adult, dear mm-hmm. God, he's going if to like, be. If it's like a Haley Joe Osment or if it's actually good. Wow, you just had you to bring that there. up. Why do you want to break my heart over I'm and over? Sorry, I'm God. sorry. I love Haley Joe Osment. I just wish that he still did roles. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's rough. And okay, then, okay. I'm gonna put these okay. two together. I'm gonna put these two together before we, before I can do mm. it. Helena Bonham Carter and Sasha Baron Cohen play the Tenardiers. I love them Thoughts. for what they are. I just feel like they are so overplayed now. That's me though, because I, I I saw them in Sweeney Todd, and then I have this movie as well, and I'm like, I can't do it anymore, guys. I can't. I'm so. Dumb. I re- I just love them. I thought they I, I thought they did a great job, and I love the fact that um, Sasha Baron Cohen in the Master of the House. He's kind of, because you can tell that the characters are supposed to be these, like, Cockney characters, mm-hmm. but he's, like, switching in and out of this French accent when he starts because talking to man. people because yeah. he's a con yeah. man, and I was like, that's a great choice. I, it's like this, I was so excited when I heard that they were playing it because I'm like, okay, this is a role that is the only comedic role in yeah. this entire play, and I felt that experience not so much with Sasha Baron Cohen, but with Helen Bonham Carter, I felt that she held back a little too much. Like, she yeah, could have gone weird. more... She could have been bigger, and she was very subdued, and I was like... That's... Was this after Harry Potter, or after. during? Okay, mm-hmm. well, then never mind. Maybe she's just tired. Well, <laughs> I do... No, but I do feel like part of it might have been a reaction to having Sasha Baron Cohen as the master of the... As, the, as uh, Mr. Tenardier, because 
when she, like she's reacting to the fact that you have this person who's like Borat playing like the just, over actor playing this role. I just didn't role. find her sense. character as interesting as his character, and like in the play, I love. I usually the love the yeah. They usually come I as love partners. like I love the part like I love her coming in and um like the whole like nothing there, and she did it so like the whole like penis joke, and she yeah. does it yeah. so like very quaintly like not much there. I'm yeah, like, and, but in the in the where's play, the like, where's the I actually and. It's so funny because we're disagreeing on so many things, but I love, I love, um, I love how Helena Bonham Carter chooses to make the character kind of like this, like sexy milf character where she's like hitting on people. I didn't mind that. Was great. Like, I didn't. Mind, I thought that that was funny that she was hitting on him. It's just like it, it was everything. Like it wasn't even just that one part was subdued. It was that entire song yeah, she yeah. subdued the part. And like later on, it's just he's the star and he takes the lead and she's just kind of the background. I mean, and I felt like that character is just as much in the front as her husband is and I didn't feel that. I didn't that feel like she was in the background though. Uh, see, again, I'm also going to be the, the Switzerland character or person in this discussion is that I'm very in the middle because I liked them both. I love what they, like, what they put to the character but at the same time I felt like at least for Helen Bonham Carter, that I feel like I wanted more from her. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit. But Sasha Baron Cohen was just fantastic. I yeah, I thought he was really funny and I he did this that's like the subduedness that he did was I think a good way of doing it it was still funny it still got the point across and I just felt like hers wasn't as do you think seeing that though is do you think you're thinking that because now you've seen Sweeney Todd and she kind of does this like very overacting kind of acting in Sweeney Todd no because I've seen her in like many things where she does it big and that's why I was excited that she was going to be in it because I wanted that but she doesn't play big and say, I mean, she, I think she's an actress who makes deliberate choices. Like, she's not very, like, flamboyant or big in Fight Club. She plays this kind of, like... Yeah, but it's still, com- the, I get the point across, and I just didn't get it in this. I don't know. Makes sense. I get it. I, I, I understand it. I know what you mean. Um, I mean but we gotta gonna... talk about the, the big guy. Calm, yeah. calm, We're gonna segue calm. into this. Love you, Colm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of segue into this as our next little area, which is gonna be talking about all of the actors that they brought from West End and Broadway so and that have done cool. this, these roles into the show. So Colm Wilkins will be the first and he of course played the bishop. God. I'm Every so, time. like when I heard he was playing the bishop I was like, oh, thank you Jesus! It's so <laughs> beautiful though because it's like the person who originated the role is playing the mentor of the new person who's playing yeah. And I've always role. been moved by the bishop so I love that Colm got to play well, him. And I love the fact that it's so cool to me that he's like play this part so many times and now he gets to be the person that looks almost at himself and is like helping himself yeah it's crazy i mean the, the last time i got excited for colm was when they did the uh, quartet of the oh of the yeah Valjean. i, I played that, that. Play that last time whoa yeah. oh man that drove me insane um, it was beautiful these next actors before we get into just an overall of it i'm just gonna go through them really quickly because otherwise we're gonna take too long um so oh, we yeah. have francis rafael of course original eponine yep uh, she was the like lead prostitute. Whore kind of number girl. one. Whore yep. It says on yeah. IMDb. The, IMDb. Yeah, I love that she played IMDb. whore number one. Whore number one. Um, I was like, get a girl. <laughs> and then we had Hadley Frazier. I didn't even well. know that 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 he was in there yeah. until I looked it up for the show. I was like, wait. What? How did I miss that? Rewind, rewind, It's also rewind. interesting because you hear, like, this is, again, one of the things that bothers me about having, like, weaker voices for the main actors and, and then, then having, and then having the ensemble like this they sound so pitch perfect when the ensemble it's comes weird. in it's it really is, there's, weird sometimes there's a stark contrast to certain songs and then wait, the guys, ensemble comes guys, in you're like guys, oh, no, guys. Yeah, yeah wait remember i was gonna read through oh yeah sorry, go, go, sorry. go 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 gina we have gina beck um she was i love in her turning song i love her uh we have michael gibson uh uh, kind of oh. serious. <laughs> oh, and he was the foreman. I was wondering what his name was. Okay, sorry. Yes. <laughs> uh, he George, looked familiar. George Blagden. Uh, sorry, I could, some of these were hard to get pictures of for some reason ah. on Google, even though they were big parts of it. I loved him. Uh, we have Killian Donnelly. He was also very good. Uh, Fra Free. Fra Fee. Sorry, wasn't he wasn't in free. the 25th anniversary yes, also? He was. Okay, I thought so. A lot of these guys were in there. Yeah. I think. Alistair Brammer. Wow, look at that face. Uh, Hugh Skinner. I don't know what his face. Oh, never mind. Yeah, that came, that came right back to me. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Ewan Lewis. I thought you said Norm Lewis. I was like, no. he was in it. No. Yes. No. <laughs> he always looks um, like Eric Matthews to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of does. Then we have Stuart Neal, the Han Solo over here. <laughs> Hannah Weddingham. Uh, she's actually on the left. I couldn't get one of her in the things. She, oh, yeah, she's going to have a solo I'm shot. I'm going to do a little segue here because I found out that she actually was in Game of Thrones as what? Septa Oma. Shut up! That's, that's her? her? Oh, my yeah. God. I so she's always just a bad that. girl. Um, Daniel Shut Evans. Up. 
Uh, I did he not played know. the pimp. Yeah, I didn't know that. And Carrie Ellis is the last one. She gets pinched by Sarah ba- Basha Cohen on the boob. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find a picture of her, so I had to screenshot it from no, YouTube. Okay. So this is why it's blurred. That's awesome. <laughs> So oh, man. I really love when they do fan call outs like this, oh, and this is so probably cool. why I was a little more okay with them not using as many people in the main parts, is because, like I said, with the producers and stuff, at least they filled up and brought us them in like little fun ways. Yeah, like they could have they could have just picked a bunch of random people who can sing and threw them yeah, into the, the ensemble. Yeah, but the producers had Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane in the movie. Yeah, but they were already names. People already knew who they were. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they're still, like, I mean, they still have, like, they were, they're Broadway actors. I know, yeah. but they've also film actors. They've also yeah. been film actors. A lot of these people, people off of uh, West End or Broadway won't yeah, know Yeah, they usually, them. yeah, you And would so never producers know. are like, no one knows who that is. And, like, even though the theater community is so huge and you probably would fill a ton of seats doing this, like, that's not how they think, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm still bitter about Norm. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not letting it go. <laughs> not letting it go. Um, all right, so going into the music for the show, I want to talk a little bit about, of course, the added song, which I forgot to put a clip in, so we won't, we won't have yeah. anything for it, but yeah. Suddenly was the added song. Uh, the Oscar bait song. Yep, there it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I listened to it before we came in, because I forgot about it, for some reason I thought and it was in the And then when you leave today, you too shall forget about it as well. I just, <laughs> it's not, it's not I super terrible, but it definitely doesn't fit. I don't mind it um, completely. Like, yeah, it's not yeah. memorable. Yeah. They did it as a segue. They felt like we needed we need to get to know to Cosette a little, a little more B. because they're going to jump forward. Yep. But we she need sees to... Castle on a cloud. No, but they, I mean... they felt we needed to get the connection between him and her and why oh. that he's adopting himself as this father role. That was just the kind of decision they made of why they had to. Plus, they always no. had a song in for Oscar. Yeah, it was oh, the best well, yeah. decision yeah, they, they had for to. Oscar bait. Yeah, yes. which I was like, okay, fine, yes. whatever. But don't take out songs that I actually like and then put in a song that I don't even give a crap about. Which we're going to get to. Sorry. I didn't mean to jump into it. Oh, you're fine. Uh, So the songs that they cut out were Not Having I Saw Him Once and Dog Eats Dog. I don't care about Not Having Saw Him Once. It's very whatever song. Dog Eats Dog, I was a little upset about. I understood the reasoning for taking it out because of, like, it, the oh, flow yeah. of the sewer scene had to be kind of quick. It wouldn't have made sense. But I just love him being like, somebody's got to clean them up. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it's just <laughs> so cool to see him be, like, you know, taking, like, what is it, a gold well, because, tooth out of one. And, well, like, because you realize, like, not that you didn't already realize that these people are terrible, but you realize just the level of their depravity yeah. when they're, like, stealing from dead people. <laughs> and, their, and their terrible justification of what yes, they Yeah, <laughs> right. And they're, like, gleefully stealing from dead people. I would love to see Sasha Baron Cohen and Helen Bonham Carter fucking skip, excuse me, skipping down like the sewers. Yes. Like, I mean, the I only, the only basically this. like reference we get to that is when they're singing One Day More and they're putting their guns in their like mm-hmm. bell that, holsters. They're yeah. like, someone's got to, you know. Yeah. That and a little bit at the end of the play when he's all like, I got this little souvenir. Because yeah. he's like telling him like, oh, I saw him carrying it. Boy, he just killed through the sewer. But I got this I souvenir. love that they were at the at the wedding and they yes. were sitting there like messing with their fake, Which you know. also, I, I was upset they cut part of their song out at the wedding. Because yeah. they had the whole thing about how some of the people there are probably queer and like all this. Yeah, it was, I, I felt like they cut a lot of their, their, their cute partner yeah. songs. Well, what know? I was saying was, they did shoot the entirety of the musical with all of the songs mm-hmm. originally, and the film was four hours long. <laughs> so, so they cut, had guys. to cut. <laughs> they had to cut, um, understandably. But I really do want them to release the full thing. Yeah, yeah. And they should have an extended yeah. cut. If you can do that for Batman versus Superman, you can do it for Les Misérables. Yes. Batman v Superman. Oh, excuse me, but still, <laughs> BS. Still never seen that. Show. Yeah, take out the V. It's BS. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, some of the more noticeable ones they shortened um, was the attack on Rue Plummet, a little, and Little People. Yeah, I like Little People. Yeah, because I, like yeah, yeah. I wanted more Gavroche, but that's me. Though. I mean, they kept the reprise, and luckily, yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it is, it is kind of his big song. Yeah, I always loved that. Uh, and they exclu- one of the choices, which I do agree with for this, um, they excluded Eponine. And brought yeah. back in the bishop for the finale. You know what? It makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense when when you're doing a movie like that and you have, A, you have someone like Colm who played the original mm-hmm. role. You want to give him more airtime and that's like the only place also, you can put him. Also, it makes sense having the person that first gave him his first chance after prison also welcoming him in. Well, yeah, he didn't him... really know Eponine. So it makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. in the play, Eponine delivers him the note. So at least there's yeah. kind of a connection with them in the play. But we didn't but get there, that. But there's not in the movie at all. They don't even meet each other in the yeah. film. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't make sense. They did originally have her and Anne Hathaway. And yeah. then also the 
the bishop. Yeah. But they just were like, that seems it like makes a lot. no sense to have her yeah. here, yeah, so yeah. they cut her out. And I think the other reason they have it in the play is because it's more of an effect of like, oh, these are two beautiful, like, angelic, beautiful yeah. angel voices. Who died, you, too. Yeah. So, and yeah. so it's more, in the play, to me, it reads more, less like the actual characters and more like angels. And then when you're doing something here, like... Um, where a movie is a little bit more literal and mm-hmm. you're actually like seeing the person standing there you're like well it probably makes more sense to have Cole Wilkinson no and uh, who doesn't want to listen to Cole Wilkinson talk I know so that, that, kind of, that kind of ending brought, gets me every time it kind of brought a full circle time. we started it did. off with that and we're ending with that. Yeah. So and I then they go to the good. barricade and then I'm yeah. weeping. And they also made the choice <laughs> I'm to take they were, right now if we keep talking they about take, it they made the choice to take Marius and uh, Cosette off the barricade. Yes. Which I thought was a good choice. Makes on sense. Because it's a barricade in heaven. But they... Because... <laughs> It is. It's true. Well, because they do... <laughs> they have them singing it. Uh, they said that they were going to, like, have this whole thing of, like, oh, it's them later on in life. They've now died and now they've come back, like, Titanic-esque and now hey, are young again. Hey, but totally no one would understand it. that. No. Yeah. No. So it was a smart decision. That's so funny. Um, and that's going to segue a little bit into... I just want to talk just a tiny bit about the scenery and the designs because I thought that it was oh amazing. My God. It's amazing because they basically built it all in England. Yes. <laughs> which is what is so amazing to me. It's and they, like... They, they built all these French sets in England. They, and they poured CGI'd, all this dirt down. They CGI texture from the actual mm-hmm. places, like the ship. They yeah. went to the actual ship and took the te- photos of the texture of the wood and, and then photoshopped, C- like yeah. CGI'd them onto it, oh, which so is like good. a really cool. Yeah. Thing also, to I do. felt I felt bad for the beat for our opening scene because yes! we had actors in oh my gosh, icy in cold the water. I was like, as the water's being thrown. If you didn't at them. know, if you haven't watched this <laughs> film yet, everybody is singing live. So these poor blokes are sitting here getting water, just like f- like flash flood on top of them as they're trying to sing notes. <laughs> and they still sounded yeah, fantastic. That's I mean, me, I was like, yeah, no. to you. I mean, I probably would have at least appreciated a little bit of ADR, because dear God, that was crazy. But like, you can't, I will never get that out of my head of like, that's rough. Yeah. Poor, especially, especially Hugh, Hugh Jackman, Jackman, who hasn't drank for 36 hours. Well, there you go. He got all of the <laughs> seawater right there. I know. I was like, was he just like, <laughs> <laughs> just, just, <laughs> Poor um, thing. And the, I felt kind of bad for the art director who made the barricade because they I actually are throwing the stuff out of the windows and cr- they had the mm-hmm. students create that barricade that's in the film now. Yeah. And then they kind of liked it so much and it worked very well. They did it in one shot that they just kind of hammered it together. And we're like, we're just going to use this one instead of the one that they were going to bring in afterwards. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so someone built a whole other barricade that they didn't get to ever be on film. Well, like, they can put that somewhere. My one shot to be on film. <laughs> I'm sure that happens a lot, though, yeah. where someone's oh, idea sure. gets, like, scrapped for a different idea. Yeah, that probably something that was, like, spontaneous. They're like, that works better. Oh. Um, and then, of course, we have to talk, like you were saying just then, we have to talk about singing live. That that was the first the coolest time thing. this has ever really been I mean, done. it won the Oscar thing. for Best Sound Mixing because they sang live. I mean, for those who don't know, they had little things in their ears. They had someone in a different room playing that was for them so they could hear it. And they sang and they filmed it. There was like there was I think there was at one point where I think Eponine was walking through the streets or some, at some point in time, and there was just a guy on a piano just like a, like blocks away who was just like. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. I would pay so much money to I be. Mean, it was such a smart guy, decision, like, mm-hmm. but this musical, especially because of how much emotion has to be in this musical, and it Holy really level. came through in the singing. Yeah. And well, I'm, it helps also, like we were saying with like Anne Hathaway, it helps inform a very like emotional performance. Whereas um, on stage, the emotion comes through in the song, but here, like you have these people like actually performing these actions and like singing, and it brings a different type of emotional resonance. Um, and then we're we're kind of getting low on time, so I'm gonna get through this next section. Um, I'm gonna have we have a clip of the Academy Awards. Oh man, that's um, here. Fun. And as we're doing that, I'm going to kind of go over yeah, what go was for nominated it. just yeah, for yeah. time's sake. Do what you got to do. Um, so this was their performance uh, from the Academy Award that Which they performed live as well. Awesome. Um, I can't this hear was not an, It's coming. Oh, it's yes. coming. I'll talk over this suddenly since yeah, we don't yeah, like it. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, Mwah. So we have, this was nominated for Best Picture, Best Actor for Hugh Jackman, Best Supporting Actress for Anne Hathaway, Best Original Song for Suddenly, yeah. um, Best Costume Design, which I... <laughs> What didn't win, which I was kind of sad about. Best yeah. makeup and hairstyling, best sound mixing. It won the best makeup and, and best yes, production it design, and it won yeah. makeup and hair. It won sound mixing, and it won Anne Hathaway. Obviously, won. Which she she totally deserved it. She yeah, did a great she really did bang up job. It. Oh, look at that beautiful this, face! <laughs> when they did this at the Oscars, I just like 
all the feels were happening. Yeah, no, I it was, was a I really was wonderful, bawling. moving performance. Yeah. See, I would have rather them did this and they were like, oh, we had to cut it out of the film for whatever. Here, we're going to perform it for you now. I don't but know, I one understand. day more is so iconic. Yeah. Oh, her hair started to grow back. Well, yeah, because I think now she was starting to do other films at this point, so she <laughs> needed her hair back. <laughs> So fast, and I liked that they kind of put little bits of yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I like that too. It's a medley. Yeah. It's beautiful. <sighs> oh my god, second. you guys are gonna try to make me cry on stage. Is what's happening. The most powerful point for me. Well, there was that two. Is it was something. when Effin, it's when Samantha Barks yes, comes on. she shows up in between them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's just like, oh my god, yeah. look at her. She's gorgeous. Oh my god, I'm gonna start crying. I mean, she does have a small waist as is. Yeah, no, yeah, she she's actually a very skinny person. Yeah. It's just that the corset pushes everything yeah. up. So you're like, wait, what's happening? So you're like, why is this a musical that big? Yeah, but she's just, she's so beautiful, and I love how they shot that. That's just so good. And I actually did get, I, I liked, when he, like I said, because I felt so bad for Russell Crowe with every bad thing. Oh, like, is he, so much. He the fact that he came and did it, I was like, he, sh- he could have just, he could have just been like, I'm not nah, doing it. No, I'm not it. doing it. You guys can just do it. Yeah. No, I think that would have worked. Perfect man is perfect. <laughs> oh, he's, it's not even fair. Yeah. I'm just gonna just, yeah, no, it's just, oh my I like God. the moving panels they have yeah, too behind really to cool. let the people out. Oh, every I don't care who you are, anytime, anytime somebody uh, brings this song up, there has to be a group of people who sing with you. You it's can't true. do it. You it's can't true. do it. Also, I don't care who you are. If you watch this and you don't have a little bit of emotion, you're I'm, you're I'm tearing up. Right? Like I don't right understand now. you. It's not even. It's. Not I think even. we all are. We all have like a little glisten oh, happening. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! It's so moving. I love Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, the head hair. shaking. She's so great. Oh, the head shaking. Yeah, I'm like, why? Do you he, have? He, he has to just hold his jaw really tight. It must. I, I don't understand it. Because I'm like, Hugh Jackman doesn't do that. <laughs> no. Nobody I know does that. <laughs> In the to- if you watch the Tony Awards for Next to Normal, actually, the dad from Next to Normal he does. does it. Yeah, that was and also kind of And he's a Broadway annoying. singer, so yeah. I mean, it does happen, I guess. <laughs> just no, I mean, understand. I'm not saying that. It's, it's just weird when you're watching it like on, on film, film because you're so close and just yeah, a bobblehead is happening. Yeah. But, um, whew, so I want to... Go into. We've already kind of said our diva song, but Alexis, we didn't hear yours. What oh, is your diva um, song for the show? What song do you sing out loud? On my own, as always. On my own? Is just, that was Jackie's. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's the one song I have to literally pull over <laughs> if it comes on my playlist, and I'm like, I don't care if I'm late. I need to sing this song fully. I can't do it all. See, I'm driving. that was my song in high school, and then I switched it. Would you switch? Yes, in the movie. The other, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I just, I, in the movie, when Eddie Redmayne, uh, when they're doing the little fall of rain, Eddie that Redmayne is like, he's time. like smiling at her though. I'm like, yeah. F you, Marius. Stop <laughs> smiling. She's dying. No, no, what I hate, and it's in the musical and in the play, like, I don't know if I said it last time or not, but when they're singing it, and he's like, oh my God, like you're dying. If I could switch place, if I could show you how much I love you. And she's like, oh yes. And then it's over. And then we go into drink with me and he's all like, well, cause that, like he just goes straight. Yeah, I'm like, straight. Wait, like he completely forgot wait, about her. Just, no, I that's think, why I, I don't like the, Marius's character. No, I think the reason he did that is because both of them know that he's not in love with her, and he's both of them know that he's doing that. He's doing yeah, that out of disrespect. Out of respect for her. It still makes me mad. It's still, yeah, no, that's the one thing I hate about I'm Marius. Like, give it, give her five minutes. Come on. <laughs> oh God. But I, it did bother me that he was smiling. I was like, stop smiling. Stop. Like, what this is this poor girl? Because I was trying to pinpoint why I didn't like that scene in the movie, and it's not. Yeah. To me, I was like, I really love Samantha Barks, so I'm not sure why I, this bothers me. And then I was like, that's why, because he keeps smiling. Yeah. All right, so smiling. let's uh, get to the end of our show. Yay! Which do we prefer, musical theater or film? Alexis? Musical theater, all the way. I don't know what it is. I mean, I love my musical movies. I think they're fantastic for what they are, but they will never take away the, the emotions and the feelings that I get when I see it on stage from just actors who are just giving it their all. But I like this movie will always top... Any musical movie is because of the fact that they decided to go the next level and have their actors sing live. That'll be something that I will always cherish because that's fantastic. And I think that more musical movies should do that. Or Jackie? not. I don't know. I agree with Alexis where I, I have respect for this movie mm-hmm. because of because of what they did, because the actors worked really hard. But um, nothing tops a musical to me. I mean, nothing, nothing quite beats being in the room. Yeah. Where it happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you son of a... <laughs> um, 
I too. It's theater for me, but I will say that this film, I thought they did an amazing job with mm-hmm. it. I think that it gave me the same feeling of the play in some ways, and yeah. I will say it's in my top three musical movies. No, yeah, yeah, same here, for sure. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us again for Broadway Breakdown. Again, go to our YouTube and our SoundCloud and our Google Play. Subscribe to us, like us, leave us comments. Uh, we have a Facebook page we have for a Facebook Broadway page. Breakdown. Woo! And next and week Twitter. we're recapping Chris Child. Yes, so, next week oh, will be the cursed child that we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about. We're gonna have some fun people talking with us. Uh, you can always reach me, bfips fourteen guys. Where can they find you? At one two three Jackie B on all platforms and eight tours eight nine zero all over social media. So make sure you join us next week for another fun week of Broadway breakdown, and we'll see you then. Bye guys. Bye. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit PopcornTalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.